There have been so many incredible interpretations of the Joker in movies and TV shows that it's unsurprising that some could go overlooked or, well, underappreciated. I think the biggest example of this, though, has to be John DiMaggio's take on the character. While he's always been one of my favorite voice actors, providing the voice for famous tunes such as Jake the Dog, Bender, and one of my personal favorites, Lobo, not to mention Waka and Kamari, but, well, you know, that's, that's a different video. I would have never thought to make him the Joker. I would have never thought that he would make a good Joker. But in actuality, he actually makes a pretty great one. He approached the role with his own unique take, not trying to duplicate anything that came before, and not being similar to anything that's come out after, either. Far too often do voice actors wind up impersonating Mark Hamill when trying to give a Joker performance. Sometimes they just take a little bit too much inspiration from that iteration, and a lot of the time they're outright instructed to try to emulate him. So I'm glad they didn't go that route. John gave the Joker a much more raspy and grim-sounding voice, which really complements his sinister nature and contrasts with the Jester's jokes. This made him seem all that much more sadistic. The actor's cadence really helped legitimize the character's chaotic nature and fractured psyche. DiMaggio manages to come off as naturally, unnaturally unhinged. He can shift gears at a moment's notice without giving the audience whiplash. His inflection rapidly changes but somehow stays fluid and smooth. There's such a careless and casual tone he takes when he's acting out in the most awful of ways. He's a completely unpredictable force of nature that disrupts any level of comfort whatsoever. You never know what he'll do or say or how he'll do or say it. The character's actions carry weight even though he clearly doesn't take himself seriously. DiMaggio hits the perfect middle ground, managing to be both dangerous but comical. He's constantly funny even when what he's doing is seriously not. Even the way the Joker joked was different. His sarcasm is much more dry than most. While his punchlines usually had a body count, he'd keep the comedy light in contrast with his darker actions. But this face-painted criminal clown's words are just as direct and harsh as the crimes that he commits. I suppose I'm going to have to teach you a lesson so you can better follow in his footsteps. Nah, I'm just gonna keep beating you with this crowbar. I'm sorry, could you hold on? I was just in the middle of setting fire to your gang. I'll need some guys. Not these guys, because, well, they're kind of dead. <laughs> a little louder, lamb chop. I think you may have a collapsed lung. That always impedes the oratory. It's sinister in nature, and it sounds natural in its sinisterness. He doesn't necessarily come off as a clown, but he definitely does come off as an unhinged inmate. There's a legitimacy to his lunacy. You never feel like he's putting on a performance, even if he is a showman. It all just feels so natural. One moment he could be enraged, and then the next moment he's bursting out in laughter. Or vice versa. He doesn't take anything seriously, even when there's a gun to his head. There's always a sense of control with this Joker. Even when he's tied down to a chair, he's still speaking with the utmost confidence. He's not unnerved by the circumstances. He's unmoved and unchanged by them. This guy just doesn't have a care in the world. He does all that he does just for the yucks. His motivation is just... cuz. I think more than any other Joker, this one comes off as an unhinged, unpredictable psychopath. You never know how he'll react to something or what it is he'll do. And if I'm being honest, the depiction of the character gives the impression that even he doesn't know what he's going to do next. Almost as if he's with the rest of us in regards to his antics. This was such a brutal but fun version of the character that I truly think makes him come off as an agent of anarchy. It feels like the speech Ledger had in The Dark Knight is personified by this clown's basic actions. This rendition of the rogue was also special because it was the first time that a Joker actor got to recreate major moments from classic comics. A death in the Family, The Killing Joke, Under the Red Hood. All of that canon was absorbed into this one performance. This meant we got to hear the character from the comics quoted verbatim in some of his most famous and infamous moments. So DiMaggio had some really heavy material to work with, opening the movie up with the brutalization of Jason Todd making audiences both cringe and chuckle at the same time. Yet, he was up for the challenge and did it justice. You know, this reminds me of a joke I told Bats once. See, there were these two guys in a lunatic asylum, and one night they decided they don't like living in an asylum anymore. 
they decided to escape. So they made it up to the roof, and there, just across this narrow gap, they see rooftops. Now, the first guy, he jumps right across with no problem. But his friend didn't dare make the leap. He says, hey, I got this flashlight with me. I'll shine it across the gap between the buildings, and you can walk across the beam and join me. But the second guy just shakes his head. He says, what do you think I am, crazy? You turn it off when I was halfway across. <laughs> Even more menacing than his voice was his crazed cackle, a hysterical howl that hits multiple notes. It's the absolute laugh of lunacy, a laugh that John put a lot of work into. <laughs> and what perfectly complements the performance is the character's appearance. I think it's more than fair to say that the look of this Clown Prince of Crime was heavily inspired by the recent redesign of the character shown in The Dark Knight. I would say that Ledger's fingerprints are all over the vision of this variant of the villain. There's definitely more than a passing resemblance there, which sort of seemed to be the M.O. of all the adaptations of the antagonist out at the time. For a time being, he redefined what the Joker was. Nonetheless, the darker look felt fitting for the darker take on the character. The raccoon eyes, the messy hair, and the jagged edges of his painted-on grin. It makes for a design that is fitting of the devil's favorite comedian. The look is still identifiable as the Joker, but it's still a look that's uniquely its own and given its own identity. Point blank, he's an absolute madman, and he looks it. Some people do seem to take issue with this cartoon clown, reasoning that the Joker shouldn't sound like this, but I really think a lot of that has to come down to John DiMaggio not being a Hamill clone. With all due respect to Mark, I mean, obviously he's the greatest, but I really don't think every iteration of the Joker should sound like his Joker. Sure, you can make an argument that every DiMaggio role sounds alike. The man has a very, very distinct voice. His voice is like a clay. You could, you, he could twist, turn, and mold it into something else, but you're always going to know that it's made out of clay. Same thing with his voice actor. He can alter his voice, he can do different things with it, he can sound different, but you're always going to know that it's him behind it. There are always going to be lingering elements and microcosms of Bender in Jake the Dog, or Dr. Draken in Marcus Phoenix. But that's not a dig at the actor at all, because it's a voice that you commit to memory. And it just so happens that that voice works well with this character model. And that's why it's such a shame thus far that his time as Clown Prince of Crime is so short-lived. He did go on to voice the character again in a couple of Lego-related projects, but... That take on the character is decidedly much more PG and much less, well, good, if I'm being honest. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine for what it is, but what it is feels beneath the actor behind the voice. Regardless, I stand by his work in Under the Red Hood and A Death in the Family. I would love to see him return to the role, should there be material matching his caliber of chaos. If you need any more evidence to the quality of this actor's performance, Mark Hamill, the most iconic Joker, actually gave DiMaggio's portrayal his stamp of approval. I'm really surprised his name doesn't come up more often when talking about the greatest Joker ever to be brought to screen, considering he starred as one of the greatest Jokers in one of the greatest Batman movies ever made. As far as I'm concerned, John DiMaggio really has to be one of the most underrated and the all-time most overlooked Joker there was. I can only imagine that that's because he's had a pretty storied resume that contains some other major notable characters, and the Joker character has a pretty storied run that contains some other major notable actors playing the part. Because it's not that people hate this take on the character, it's that most people don't seem to remember it, or just forget about it from time to time. Although, his voice does sort of remind me of another Joker, but maybe that's a story for a different day. And if that's a story that you'd like to hear, let me know in the comment section below by leaving a comment saying, What a joker. I am vengeance. I am the knight. And that was V-Infuso.
Just remember, if you're not tuning in, then you're missing out. So, if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too would like to become a V-generate, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, nerds! And if you're not joining the fun, you're in for one bad day. And you know what they say about having one bad day. <laughs> Catch him next time. Same bad time. Same bad channel.